Welcome back everybody. Today we are still working on the bar. We are going to be crawling underneath it today and uh, checking all the press wheels. Uh, Dad, yesterday while I wasn't here, he's done all the tyres, check them. Uh, I've ordered some new tyres. Uh, you might be able to see these ones here uh, getting very dangerously uh, worn out. So they're going to probably pop during harvest, uh, seeding. Uh, we switched these ones around, so Dad switched this one well, to there. Well, that one was there, yeah. Switched them around because you can see the tread here is getting annihilated. And that was out here, and that is free to stubble, whereas here it's behind the track. Uh, we need to check this wheel because it's free rolling. Um, bearing shouldn't, shouldn't last that long. Uh, so, yeah, first of all, we're going to start off by pulling off a cap and checking this press wheel up here. So we need to check all our press wheels. Um, we need to grease them all for starters. Uh, but just to get an idea, we just go along and we spin them. And you can see if one is buggered or not. This one's still spinning. The one other two that I just did have stopped. Now I'm not sure if they, the mic's picking it up or not but it's very gravelly in there. So that's the sound that a bearing is gone, or most likely gone. So if I just can get my, my clip off here. Oh, without dropping everything on the ground, John. That's all right still. When the bearing's not toast, it does sound gravelly, but... That sounds nasty. Could be the inside. Yeah, this outside one looks alright. There is movement though, so... Yep. I guess we're changing it. Oh, don't step in it. Uh, I'll just get the bearings there in that box up there, yeah? If they're not up there. Yeah, it couldn't be up there. So we're going to get this one off. So typical whilst I'm away, the... Uh, the of exciting, you know, stuff happens. So uh, Henry, I'll put a photo up now, was spraying and uh, the truss on the Agrifac broke, which wasn't ideal. Um, so we got Julian out and welded it up and Dad and Henry had a lot of fun with that. Fun, yes, I forgot how <laughs> good farming was. <laughs> so much fun. So uh, yeah, they had to get the boom level with the telehandler and uh, yeah, welded it up, put some, some gusseting around and he's spraying now, so it worked. So he was only out for, I guess, four uh, or five hours, but... Yeah, that'd be a battle. Yeah, it's uh, not, not an exciting thing to see happening, but um, at least Julian was onto it and was out quick and got it fixed. Put a couple of fish plates as, you know, strengthener on the side of the main gusset, so it should be good. Hopefully. <laughs> Right, so what I'm going to do is uh, go along and do all our press wheels and uh, whichever ones I find that are dodgy, I'm going to undo and then Dad is currently, oh, that's now stuck on me. Dad is in the uh, workshop at the moment and he's just replaced a press wheel on one from last year. <laughs> Shows you how efficient we are. And uh, he'll change the press wheel over so it's all good and I'll crawl underneath the bar and grease up and yeah take anything off that needs taking off. That one might be a bit a bit dodgy. These ones are alright. That one's good, that one's not. So you might be able to hear it. So it could be nothing, but uh, it could be something. So uh, we'll take them off, just take them in there, just make sure, just check. There's nothing worse than having a press wheel go uh, at, a, at any time, but 
you know, when you're really busy or night time or early morning when there's uh, just a seated driver and nobody else around. So uh, yeah, this is why we, we'll just take it off and make sure and put it back on. Slowly getting through the bar. I've taken two more off and just, uh, yeah, showing you guys again the uh, the sounds that I'm, I'm looking for. So this is a, a good one here. Now it does free spin for a bit, bit longer than what it should, but I do need to grease them. I'm just gonna go through all these first. Then I'll come through and grease. So this one here is one that is bad. So hopefully you can hear that sort of sound that I'm I'm hearing the uh, sounds a bit like gravel is in there sort of so that's what I'm looking for so that's something I'll take off and we'll uh, yeah we'll either replace it or just repack it and send it on its way we do only have seven bearings and I reckon we're damn near close to having taken seven press wheels off but um, yeah we'll get just go and uh, order some more from uh, Afgri, some more bearings and we'll be right. But yeah, we're, we're getting through it. I still got to do this one here. I'll do this one once I finish going through all this. Right, so we have seven bearings on hand and I think nine press wheels at last count. Now I've gone through the whole bar. That's all done. There is a few that are a bit iffy, but to all I'll, uh, I'm hoping for is when I pump grease into them, that'll sort them out. Now, I'm just going to take these tyres off for Dad because it's much easier for him to operate when he's got the uh, just the hub. You're going to look after your old people. Yeah, well, I was just about to say, I think I've given you the worst job. <laughs> going around and checking the bar, it's easy. And then all I'm going to do, all I'm going to do now is go and uh, crawl underneath the bar and grease them all up. And Dad's uh, got the hard job of all the bearings. So these two here aren't ready to go. Um, we just... Dad's gonna get that one all cleaned up. Then I'll come in and put a bead of weld on uh, this cone here and then the cone on the other side. Um, so that, uh, well, they're, but they're, they need changing anyway, because you, well. Well, they, they you, if you look, you can see uh, the lip. The camera won't, but. You can't see, just there, where the bearing's worn it out. So your bearing gets buggered and dry uh, and it'll start to wear that cap, that cone out. Uh, so it's best just to replace the cones when you replace the bearing so that the whole thing is good to go and most of them I think more it's the inside bearing that's buggered than the outside. Yeah but these um, I think it is just general wear because there's still a heap of grease that's in there. dirty but yeah. it's not not covered in dirt and clay like we've had it last year. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll weld them because what well, that helps, it helps shrink the bearing of uh, the cone and it also gives dad a purchase to hit off because at the moment, not that you guys will be able to see in here, but you can't get a punch in there to, to hit that out. So just to, uh, to make life easier, you just do a nice hot weld and um, yeah, she can basically fall out from there. So uh, yeah, I'll leave dad to this. I'll go grease a bar. So like I said, I got the easy job. I uh, just have to crawl underneath the bar. All of our press wheels have got a grease nipple on the back, so it's going into the centre of the hub. Uh, so the idea is when you grease that, the pressure of it, you should be able to push it through the front and then through the back bearing as well. In theory, whether it's doing it or not is, a, uh, is another thing altogether. But uh, yeah, the, the joy of this electric grease gun is you can choose your pumps. So I've got 25... Uh, Set it on 25 and we'll see what that's like. Oh, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Doesn't need 50. <laughs> it's pushed through the back. Oh, well, that'll, that, at least I know that it's greased. <laughs> Uh, so that one there I greased probably a bit too much. So what's happened is um, the grease you can see here has come through the back, which isn't ideal. You don't really want that to happen. So what I'll do is I'll just stick with my 25 pumps 
well, I'll give them a spin first, give them 25 pumps and then see what it's like after. Some of these did sound dry and I was trying not to avoid having to take them into dad and because they're not, hopefully it's just grease they need, not a whole bearing replacement. So we'll go through and yeah, probably change about six grease cartridges. Okay, she's all greased. Uh, Dad's still inside dealing with all those press wheels that I've given him. Uh, I've greased all of the hubs on the, the landing wheels. So now I'm just going to take off this hub cap here. If I can position you better, there we go. And uh, basically investigate why it's rolling so much. The, uh, I'm just hoping that it's just going to be that we just got to uh, tighten the nut up and maybe just put some more grease in and hopefully not a bearing that we're going to change. But uh, this is obviously the wheels that are dry, that this whole bar folds up onto. So there is a possibility that the, uh, you know, this could actually be uh, a buggered, buggered bearing, but we'll just check. That took a fair bit to get off. I had to, because uh, it's so tight in here, I can't actually get behind with my uh, chisel to be able to get it out. So I had to go incrementally up and up and up to the biggest chisel we've got. So I can finally see in, which is good. And there doesn't look to be any play in there and the grease looks good. So. I'll bring you down here. So the grease looks good. There doesn't look to be any play. Uh, so what I reckon I might do, so I've got to remove this split pin and I see if I can get this nut, just another turn around and uh, tighten her up and see if that works. So as you can see there, I was able to get uh, quite a bit of a movement. So I've just moved it one spur across. And 
and uh, I definitely don't think we're going to need to do anything with the bearing. It's still rolling for a bit. I'll see if I can get another, move it another. Oh. No. So, I'm going to have to loosen it off. Yeah, I'm going to have to loosen it off and just have it at that when I had it. Come on. All right, so before I put the cap on, I've got my grease gun just here. I'm going to start pumping grease in just so I can see it come through this way. And then I'll uh, chuck the cap back on. some in the cap here and we'll chuck it back on and then it'll be uh, right to go for seeding. Dad's got a few more to go in there. As you can see the bar has moved from here and is now down there and parked very crookedly but uh, that's as good as I could get it. So uh, now I've got a, my cardboard box has been flying around. I'm just going to pick up all the stuff that's on the ground here just so it's out of the way and uh, you know, finish the job before going to the next. Then I'm going to sweep that bunker and um, yeah, this afternoon Dad and I will get those, uh, those dividers in all ready for, uh, for the fert and you won't be able to see it but right there is uh, three cans of um, expander foam because that's what we use to to spray in between the joints of each one so that uh, the um, the fur doesn't trickle in to, from side to side. In uh, previous years, including last year, all we normally do is just get in here with the uh, fire in it and just wash it out. Because as you can see, it's mostly just dust on the ground. Uh, but the only reason I'm sweeping it out is because see Terminator were in here changing the Terminators over and they piled up all their rubbish but it was that really windy day and it blew everything back into the shed so nothing got out so instead of me going around trying to find each individual thing and picking it up we are just going to uh just going to sweep it uh we'll sweep it and then that way all of the uh the like i don't i don't want to wash the zip ties and get them stuck in the track and bolts and um, pop rivets and have it all pop tires or anything silly like that so that's why I'm just gonna sweep it and pick it up clean it out and then we can come in here with the with Louie and the, the things the dividers and uh, chuck them in uh, we also need to along our edge chuck our bricks up on the tarp now that again is there so that we can stack more in uh, when you like we can't stack overly high anyway, but having this here just gives us that bit to go just, you know, maybe even just to there, so this is the light, the height there. It just gives you that chance to stack a bit more in. Um, and when you don't have it, it means it goes into the, uh, into the channel. So it goes into there, and it could even be uh, some dry fertilizer there that I can't see, so that's why we do it. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll just need to lift that up because we'll be attaching, well, pushing that the first divider hard up against that so yeah it sort of sets it in place so i'll uh get to sweeping Just like last year, so those who have been watching the channel for uh, since the start will know. We've got a uh, little bracket that I've welded up and made up that goes on top of, uh, well goes on a chain which slides on top of those concrete dividers. And then uh, yeah we just 
bring it in like that and we've got the old line here as you can see where we aim for and it's sometimes not as easy as as easy as that to just line it up but yeah we'll get there so yeah we'll um put these all in and then uh, what we do is we expand the foam like I was saying because we get holes and gaps in it and just stops product from going from one side to the other not such a big issue but when you're just getting say all of the urea delivered uh, and then the next delivery is the ag star then you've got a pile of urea on that side and it just that's just becomes annoying like that Part. it's definitely the first one they're, as you can see they're not straight anyway they're you know it's concrete so it's not always poured perfectly well that's now what we base everything else off <laughs> so we've got these concrete uh, or concrete we've got these steel caps that go in between both of them and this is so that uh, it just stops not that they do but it just stops them from um, from falling over essentially when you've got too much weight on one side just locks the whole row together some go on very well some barely go on at all but that's the uh the joy of it and you can see obviously with the rain we had it's quite green around here so we've got to got to get to mowing and slashing and getting the place all nice and neat and tidy we've got it all in um, how straight are we so there's a few here like number three you can see how the concrete just doesn't line up I don't know what they got wrong with their molds or something but it's it's even along the ground but then it's uh, you know, essentially like that and we've got it down here on number well four from the back or three depends which one you look at is it this one or that one but see what I mean but most, yeah, it's, it's fairly straight. So we've got uh, these bad boys here. And if I can get it apart. Okay, now they're apart. See, they don't exactly sit the best there. Yeah, not ideal. I just don't, especially like this next one, is barely gonna sit on there. But, Not at all, but that's what we've got to do. Oh, that one's not getting it done at all, anyway. And then I'll uh, we'll get the snot out and we'll, we'll snot it up so it doesn't leak anything. Oh, oh, perfect. Now the fun part for this whole thing, 
So here, you can see that nothing's really going to get through this and we're touching down here pretty much while we are. And as you get up, look at the giant gap that we end up with in here. It's all to do with, you know, the concretes. We've had this concrete, I don't know, uh, 14 years, maybe? Maybe not that long, maybe 10 years, 10, 12 years, something we've had that. So, the, you know, the, floors, the floor of the concrete's getting a bit eroded and all that. So it's, you know, it's, it's getting weak and whatnot. So it's not level on the ground and that's how we end up with these gaps here. But nothing, a little bit of expander foam. Can't fix. So we'll uh, we'll spray it, and then tomorrow or something we'll come along and we will uh, um, cut it all off, just so it, obviously it's going to hang out, and we don't want any of that getting into our um, into our fertilizer. Oh, I'm gonna put you down because I'm need two hands. So all the holes are, are gooped up, and even uh, where some certain loader drivers, one might have been me, have uh, hit it and broken the chips away. So we fill all that in just to make it a bit easier when we're shoveling and doing all that. So that's all done. Um, like I said, we'll cut that off probably tomorrow once it's all dried and expanded. You can see how it's you know it's all expanding and coming out. So uh, yeah, I reckon we'll leave the video there. So thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Have a listen to the Glass Cage podcast and I'll catch you in the next one.